that movie nut here with a review for Popeye, the 1980 family film starring Robin Williams, Shelley Duvall, Paul Dooley, and Ray Wallstone. Based on the comic strip by E.C. Seagar, the story follows the titular sailor man Popeye as he arrives in the town of Sweet Haven. Initially, the locals don't take kindly to him, already dealing with matters of oppressive and ridiculous taxes imposed by the mysterious Commodore. And while looking for a viable hotel that will actually let him stay, he comes across the oils and, of course, olive oil, who at this moment is engaged to the Commodore's primary enforcer, Bluto. Then, over the course of a few days where Popeye commits various actions, such as beating up a group of local bullies and winning a boxing match that helps get tax relief, the locals begin to warm up to him. And eventually, somebody leaves a baby, Sweepy, to his care, which unfortunately gets Bluto angry since he believes that it's the child of Popeye and olive oil. And from there, the fist fights and other misadventures ensue. The casting all around is actually rather good. Robin Williams fits the titular character to a T. His voice is a little higher than the animated Popeye, but it still is a pretty good impression. And he does look like the sailor with the big chin and, of course, the prosthetics applied to his forearms, which look actually rather good. And Shelley Duvall, again, fits the role of olive oil to a T. Though perhaps a little too well, as we'll get into when we talk about script. She's very much the prissy, overbearing woman, and of course later dams that we've all come to know. And her voice is a pretty accurate replica as well. And of course the supporting cast includes many characters from the original comic strip, as well as familiar faces like Wimpy, Bluto, Pappy, and Olive Oil's family, The Oils, played by actors such as Paul Smith, Paul Dooley, Dick Lambertini, Ray Walston, Roberta Maxwell, and a whole bunch of others who actually, with what limited material they have, being essentially background characters, do pretty well with it and do give the characters some degree of personality and spirit. And that's not carrying the big ensemble, which apparently was full of people who were hired from European circuses, thus giving Sweet Haven a population of colourful but decent enough characters, though again, they are mainly there to sing songs and cheer on Popeye or shut him out as they do in the beginning. Now, aside from casting, one thing Popeye can be complimented on immediately is its visual aesthetic. The town of Sweet Haven was a real set built by the crew for the movie, and it looks really good. It feels like something right out of a comic strip or even a storybook. Its strange design is a great mirror of the weird and unusual characters that live in there. Some of the buildings are even built out of old ships, and the harbour apparently was full of real ships that were actually seaworthy but were sunk by the crew. Many of the buildings' interiors are also built around a ship theme, and you see recurring things such as life rings and netting and barrels being used as furniture or wall decorations. And just the fact that they were able to build on this scale and build a whole town is actually really impressive in and of itself. In addition to the really good costuming, where each character does look like the characters we've come to know. You've, you see the familiar sailor outfits of Popeye, both his white ones and his black and red ones. Olive's familiar red and black dress. Wimpy's bowler hat and fat suit, and of course, Bluto's hat and sweater, among others, and they all look really good and accurate. And the other costumes have a sort of mix of 1930s with your stereotypical rough seafarer type of look. And once again, add to the strange nature of Sweet Haven. On the other hand, the songs by Harry Nilsson, who's meant to be a rather re well-respected musician, so I've heard, are a completely different story. There are only about four songs here, not counting the Popeye theme song, and they're not very good 
at all. It's not the fact that the actors sing badly, they actually sing rather well. The problem is the lyrics. The lyrics here are some of the worst I've ever heard from any movie song. I mean, people love to complain about the songs in, like, Disney direct-to-video movies. Those are Oscar-winning masterpieces compared to the songs here. The lyrics are incredibly poor, and they f have a very rushed quality to them, which isn't surprising given that Harry Nielsen was working on another album while he was scoring this movie. One of the worst examples is when Popeye sings I Am What I Am in a later part of the movie, and literally two-thirds of the song is him just going, I am what I am, and that's all what I am, and I am what I am, and I am what I am. Literally, it's that just for most of the song. Not to mention there's an incredibly corny, sappy love song that Olive sings called He Needs Me. And boy, is this stinker. The lyrics here are terrible. Again, like I am what I am, the lyrics He Needs Me, He Needs Me are repeated ad nauseum. And it is just so terrible. And it's not helped that the orchestration is very minimal. And it almost feels karaoke-esque. Though to the score's credit, the orchestrated versions of the classic Popeye song and the spinach theme music are actually really well done. And now we come to the final thing, which is the script. But before I get into that, there's a little thing that I just want to get out of the way. And though I have brought it up before, it's something I'm just going to bring up for twofold reason. One for posterity's sake and also for one of the common complaints that's levied against the movie. It's based on the comic, not the cartoon. There are so many reviews where I hear the reviewer complaining legitimately about a lot of the things and then saying, it's not like the cartoon. Popeye was a comic strip character originally and this film is based on the strip not Paramount's cartoons. How the filmmakers didn't hide this fact. On the theatrical poster, it says, based on comic strip by E.C. Seeger, not based on cartoons by Max and Dave Fleischer. But even with that taken out of the equation, how does Popeye stack up? Unfortunately, like the songs, less than well. The script was written by veteran cartoonist Jules Pfeiffer, who apparently is meant to be a fan of the original Popeye strip by Seeger. Unfortunately, his lack of experience in the script writing field and his experience as a cartoonist does show. What I mean by that is that the film's character development and narrative are all over the place. They feel fragmented, and dare I say, it feels like a bunch of comic strips joined together to form one narrative, or in this case, three short Popeye movies to come together as one narrative. In the beginning, it's sort of a lone wolf fitting into society type of story. Then in the middle, it becomes sort of a story about Popeye's parenthood and him looking after Sweepy. And then in the third act, it becomes an adventure movie where they go after treasure. And it feels like there's very little progression between the three. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to do this now. Bing! And then it just happens. It doesn't feel natural. And it's not helped that Olive Oil's characterization is all over the place. Sometimes she'll be the snooty, stern Olive, and other times she'll be sweet and loving. It's all over the place. It's not even like, oh, one half of the movie she's like this, the next half she's like that. It jumps in and out. Plus, given Bluto's behavior and the fact that the two share a little screen time on their own, we never fully buy that she was engaged to him. And once again, just feels like another contrivance just to get Olive and Popeye together. Not to mention, there are loads of little ideas here and there sprinkled throughout, such as Sweepy having psychic powers, which was originally meant for another character that had to be cut from the script, and which later Wimpy tries to use so that he can win at gambling, as well as other things like, why does the Commodore put such ridiculous and high taxes? Why does the town of Sweethaven seem so hostile to outsiders? And a bunch of other little things that just never come together or are not very well explained. In addition to the fact that it's tonally all over the place, at points being more comic strip cartoonish, 
such as when Popeye fights the bullies and beats them up in a variety of different ways, and times when it strangely leans towards the more adult with scenes like the gambling, and even a point where Popeye and crew enter into a brothel. Don't worry, there's nothing explicit, but it is very strongly implied. And it just doesn't feel very well balanced. Add to that, the fact that the film is directed by Robert Altman, one of the late great directors who was responsible for movies such as Nashville, Mr. and Mrs. McCabe, Prairie Home Companion, Gosford Park, and a whole bunch of others, would come onto a project like this. Though, to be fair, the ensemble cast and the weird themes do seem very much fitting for him. And for the most part, he does a good job with it. Some of the most of the slapstick and cartoonish fights are actually rather well done. He gives Sweet Haven a sense of scale and size. And doesn't make anything feel like a set. However, much like Pfeiffer, there are a couple of times where his approach is a little uneven. Notably in the opening, where after a brief segment from the black and white cartoon, which understandably got people confused into thinking this was an adaptation of the cartoon, it starts out on a really dark storm with Popeye on a boat rowing through the storm and there's no music or anything it's just the sound of harsh lightning with no music or anything and on top of that you got the goofy Popeye lettering and it just feels strange and I know it's building up to the fact that it all brightens up when we get to Sweet Haven but it seems a little excessively dark to open up a kid's film. In fact, dare I say, it feels like more an opening to a sequel for, for The Fog. And so at the end of this, you may be thinking, I despise this movie and that you should never, never see it. But actually, I would recommend you check it out. It's strange mishmash of tones and ideas and songs that just make it an interesting watch. I mean, it's certainly not a great or good movie, but it's just so strange to think that a movie like this, based on this property, could come together like this. It's one of the most unique comic movies. And so, I must give Popeye a bronze star. It's all over the place in terms of narrative, development, and tone, but strangely, all its messiness combines together to make an interesting viewing experience, if not one without its flaws. And it's probably one of the most unique offerings from Altman's entire catalogue.